Stephen, a tough week undoubtedly this week against it, a backdrop of you know what you achieved last season. Where does this rank in terms of the challenges you faced as Rangers manager? Well, at the beginning of the season, we spoke about having to move on from from last year. Um, so, you know, I think as a club and as a manager, I made it pretty clear that we need to move on. Um, I agree with you in terms of having a tough week and the challenges that are in front of us. It's very much about trying to get back in a good place as quickly as we can. I think the best way to do that is to win your next next football match. Uh, this League Cup match is really important to us. We um, We've picked a squad and I'm going to pick a team that's really strong, um, which will which will mirror what I'm saying. And, um, you know, as soon as we win that football game, which we intend to do, I'm sure the feeling will flip a little bit more in our favour and then we've got to move into the next challenge. So we're well aware of the week we've been through. Uh, I'm well aware of the challenge that's in front of me and us. And um, it's very much a case of, you know, getting to this kick-off as quick as we can because that's the only... Only thing we can do is is move into the next game and try and win what's in front of us. Um, more specifically, just looking at um, the qualification for Champions League and the impact that not reaching that has, is there any indication that you will have to to trim your squad or or that players might now want to leave? Uh, not on the back of the last two results in terms of Europe, um, but at the same time, I'm well aware of how this club works and how it runs, and um, we are a club that if the right numbers land for our players we do have to recycle um, I'm well aware of that um, but nothing's been said to me since the game in terms of being in a rush or a hurry to do that and um, nothing's changed in terms of me wanting to keep my best players here to give us the best chance of being successful moving forward but I totally understand uh, how the club runs how it works and if the right numbers land for one individual or a couple of individuals I know they'll be considered above me um, so I'm not naive enough to sit here and think that you know the last two results won't have an impact somewhere down the line. What's the mood like in the dressing room and on the training pitch? Because this is unusual territory for your players, especially after the season they had last year. Yeah, look, I think when you when you lose three football matches within a week, I think you can quite work out how the mood's been. Um, but that's my job to to lead in these situations and make sure that we flip this mood as quick as we can. But um, Obviously, you can pick the lads up, you can reset, but until that actual next game comes around, um, you know, you've got to use this feeling to try and react in the right way and try and find that performance that flips the mood. That's exactly where we are right now. Um, I don't want to lie or bend the truth and say that everything's fantastic at the moment. We're all cracking jokes and it's a really fun environment to be in. It doesn't work like that at Rangers. If you get a bump or you get a setback or a couple of results that are not ideal, um, we want the mood to feel like it does because that's where the reaction and that's where the, the turnaround comes from because players don't like this feeling, coaching staff don't and neither do our supporters so it's about unity, sticking together, getting that next game um, here as quick as we can and then trying to put in a performance that trying, you know, turns our form and turns the mood. Have you had a chance to sort of gather your senior players together and maybe have a chat about what's gone wrong and, and how you can turn things around? I've spoke to them all. Um, I speak to my senior players on a daily basis. I haven't literally got seven or eight of them into a group, into my room. I haven't done that. Um, I, I've got great relationships with them all on a daily basis. And whether we win, lose or draw, the relationship and the communication is always there every single game. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, man. <clears throat> um, last week you've been, uh, you've been involved in, sorry, this week you've been involved in three different competitions and you've got five games between now and the international break. Obviously, you've got a dedicated squad for Europe. Is it your intention to move to squad rotation, or with this been you know relatively uh, early in the season that you assess your squad game by game and see who gets to the scratch line and then choose then? No, um, I don't think I'm in a position where I have to make wholesale changes. Um, I think for different reasons throughout pre-season people have been missing, um, whether that be a family issue, uh, whether that be an isolation issue, whether it be an injury issue. Um, the squad's starting to feel healthier, bodies are coming back and main players are getting in and around it. You know, you look at our injury risk now, only Sakala, who's got a niggle and groin, who we've decided not to risk tomorrow. Uh, besides Sakala, um, we've got a fully fit squad to pick from, besides Jack and Katic that you're well aware of. 
Um, so things will settle down. I, I totally understand and appreciate the external scrutiny at the moment because of the start we've had and losing three in a week is totally understandable. But for me, it's important to stay calm and, 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 and realistic. Um, we've played two games in the league. We've won one and lost one. And our direct rivals have done exactly the same. Uh, the League Cup hasn't started as of yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. The FA Cup hasn't started yet and doesn't start till after the new year. OK, we haven't qualified for the Champions League and over the two legs we haven't deserved to qualify in the Champions League. Um, and the realistic opinion on that from me is maybe we're not ready. You know, Are we ready for PSGs? Are we ready for Chelsea's and, and Man City's to come to Ibrox? Maybe not. You know, At the end of the day, we've proven that we're a last 16 team in, in, in the Europa League. Um, we've tried to punch above our weight in the last week and, and move into that playoff round in the Champions League. We couldn't achieve it. We have to accept that and move on to the next challenge as soon as possible. Looking back at the um, at the Malmo game, first half you'd largely unrelenting pressure. They did have a little spell in the game. You'd a goal. Uh, they had a player sent off. Mm. With hindsight, with your instructions, your changes for the second half. Is there anything you would do differently? Um, hindsight's a wonderful thing in football. Uh, I thought game plan wise in the first forty five minutes the players were outstanding and carried it out perfectly well. You know, the plan was to always try and win the first half and get in the half time at a good place. At the time you think in the sending off's a, a bonus, if you like. Um, looking back on the information that myself and the staff give the players at half time, I wouldn't change any of that information. Um, we haven't performed well enough in the second half to, to, to continue where we was in the first half and we've got to restart badly wrong um, so we'll certainly be looking at them situations to try and improve moving forward but um, I'm not looking back and thinking I made mistakes in terms of team selection um, once they scored I tried to be as positive and as bold as I can in my substitutions to try and find that goal again um, we had enough pressure we got into enough right places um, but if you don't execute you can't turn, turn results around or in game or after the game Stephen, you obviously mentioned in pre-season uh, how important the domestic cups uh, were going to be to you, uh, looking to be able to, to, to achieve one. Given uh, Tuesday night, has this changed your thinking um, in terms of your approach to the game, given the fact that it now uh, looks like a good opportunity to get the team back on form? Uh, no, not at all. We made it abundantly clear to the players and, and, and the squad um, before we kicked the ball this season that the domestic cups are important and that we want to um, try and be successful in both. Uh, we want to go all the way in both, so I think you'll see in my team and squad selection tomorrow uh, how serious we're going to take this competition. And I'm sure once the the Scottish Cups comes round as well, we'll we'll be given that uh, full 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 focus and, and and trying to do as well as we can in both. We see them as two opportunities to add silverware to us, so we'll be going full full throttle to try and win them both. And um, also, just uh, as we touched on there, there was a, a great deal of pressure. Uh, on Malmo uh, towards the last 10 minutes of the game. A number of corners going in. Something that's maybe been a bit lax for us in terms of set pieces so far at the start of this season. Is that something that your team's picking up on? We're working on it. We work on them for every game. Um, I think there's got to be two sides of it. We've obviously got to put the right quality into the right areas. And then we've got to have enough players that want to go above and beyond and be aggressive on them to go and try and score goals. Um, it is something that we're working on in terms of all our fi final third play. I think set pieces comes into that as well. So. Um, we have to get the execution right um, in the final third if we want to win games and be consistent, that's for sure. But yeah, you're right, we are working on it. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Stephen, you said in relation to the question about uh, players potentially leaving that will happen somewhere down the line. Mm. If you're being realistic in, in light of missing out on the Champions League funds, is it realistic to assume that that's going to happen in this window? Well, to be honest with you, even if we were successful against Malmo, if the right number lands for a player here, um, I think the board are going to listen and consider it. That's the way it is. That's the way the club works. I think that's always been the case and it always will be moving forward. Um, we honestly, hand on heart, haven't had a realistic bid in black and white for any of our players. We haven't had a serious phone call for any of our players. That's the reality and that's where it is right now. Um, but whether the Champions League progress happened or not, I don't think it changes too much. If the right number lands for the right player, I know in my position, the board are going to bring it to me. And previously you just said there that, you know, maybe this team club isn't ready for Champions League football yet. Why do you think that is? And do you accept that the club should 
minimum be reaching the playoffs of that competition. Yes, um, we're really frustrated and disappointed that we didn't overcome overcome Malmo because I believe um, if we would have performed to the level that we're capable of, I think we would have been good enough to progress. So that's certainly on myself and us. Um, what I meant by that was we haven't been able to achieve that. So the evidence is quite clear that we're not ready to make it to the Champions League. So maybe we need to keep on improving, realise where we are, keep trying to get forward, learn and grow, and then maybe somewhere in the future we are ready for it.